first of all, I would like to acknowledge that, you know, globally speaking, uh, there has been tremendous impact of technology within the civic space uh, in enhancing democracy, human rights, and civic freedoms. But also, it is important to note that the impact of this, uh, in terms of implementation across the globe, has been different. And uh, the implementation of civic tech solutions in the global north has been different from the implementation of civic technologies in the global south. And there are a lot of challenges that come across a lot of civic actors, especially those that are in the civic tech space when it comes to implementing civic tech solutions. And this afternoon, I would like to submit to you that of course, we do have a lot of these challenges, but I will speak of three major challenges that are faced by civic tech actors when they are trying to implement civic tech technologies uh, in the global south. The first one uh, that I have noticed based on our experiences is the challenge of um, poor internet infrastructure. And I'll give you an example. So uh, when we started uh, Justice Code Foundation some four years ago, we had our first project called Ask to the Justice. So it's a mobile application that is used to educate on human rights and also document human rights abuses in Zimbabwe. So whilst we were implementing uh, and launching our technology, you know, we noticed a huge uptake of our technology, but this was limited mostly to the urban centers. And we were quite curious why that was, until we had to take our mobile application to the rural areas. And we were so much surprised that our uptake was close to zero. And this unlocked a new reality unto us that, you know, Civic technologies are not or cannot be uniformly implemented even within a, sim a similar geographical area. In Zimbabwe, we came to the realization that there is a very strong digital divide when it comes to implementation of technology. And this digital divide was manifested in what I've just explained. So we went back to the drawing board and we realized that, you know, in rural areas, the internet infrastructure is just so poor. Number one, people cannot really afford to buy data so that they can access the internet. That's the first challenge. Number two, even if you buy the data, it is also, I mean, it is also difficult for you to access some of the these web-based platforms or even mobile apps, because the infrastructure, you o you're only limited to 2G, and the best connection or bandwidth that you get is 3G in most instances. So this is a reality that we came to realize, and it helped us inform our next solution, which was an AI platform uh, that was built over WhatsApp. And we came to package our solution on WhatsApp because we realized that, you know, of the total internet consumption in Zimbabwe, more than 43% of it was accounted for by WhatsApp alone. So out of this realization, we then went on to package our solution on WhatsApp. Then the second challenge is that of government antagonism. And this point, I was glad that it was shared by uh, these guys. And I'm realizing that this problem is not just in Zimbabwe or in Africa, but it's also even across the globe as well. So when we were working on one of our solutions called VoteBot, 
Uh, so VoteBot is a platform, it's an AI chatbot built over WhatsApp, whose main purpose is to uh, educate young people on voter information. And also we tried out something new that we called citizen observation of elections. Simply explained is that we gave it as a tool at the hands of people so that they could you know, document election abuses across the country. So based on this, we realized that each time we were doing community engagements in local communities, introducing our platform, we could notice state security agents seated within the midst of the, con um, I mean, within the midst of the community members, trying to listen, and even before they would call us privately, what is it that you want to discuss about? Uh, you know, this is going to offend us. You know, you cannot talk about this. So if you want to go ahead with your work, you need to remove this pass. So, you know, these are the challenges that you meet day by day. But even besides that, I had three of my team members leaving the job whilst we were in the midst of the uh, project because they were threatened. They were followed by these state security agents. Anything that the state or the government perceives that is a threat to its existence, they target it. Our offices were raided during the election, together with many other offices as well. Our equipment was taken. And one notable event when we received an award uh, on AI implementation and impact. Uh, so I was coming from Ghana to receive the award and then Whilst I, I was at the airport, I was illegally detained for more than three hours. They had to take my laptop, my other cell phone. They asked us to pull down some of the platforms that we have. So you can see that these are some of the challenges that you face when you have, or when you are trying to implement civic tech solutions in what I call FCV areas areas that are fragile, conflict affected, or that are surrounded by violence. Then the last point that I would like to submit to you is that of um, citizen interests. And I think this is shared across the globe. It is not just unique to the global south, but even I think in the global north as well. And this speaks to the fact that, you know, these technologies, these civic technologies, are uh, unlike your social media apps, your fintech apps, they are not really used on a day-to-day -day basis. I open my WhatsApp every now and again, but speak of civic tech platforms, maybe they are once a week, once a fortnight, and these are also challenges when it comes to sustainability and even implementation of these technologies. And I can tell you for a fact that we, we had a vote bot in Zimbabwe ahead of the 2023 elections. But truth be told, right now, VoteBot is a platform that is just dormant because no one is using it. We are waiting for the next election. Uh, so those are some of the challenges that I think are quite important. I know there are a lot of these, but I just want to submit to you that of the, of the many challenges that are asso associated with uh, civic tech implementation, these three are quite notable and crucial and uh, worth to be taken into account. Thank you very much.